Lyon is the city of silk and it became the city of silk uh, in the 18th century and Prel is one of the testimony of this. So we have been operating at Sept Rue Barodet in Lyon since 1880. Prel today is run by my father who is the eighth generation of Verzier and the fifth generation of Prel. We have records of Prel furnishing fabrics to a designer that was the main intermediary between the Frick and Prel. And so we were able to trace back with the different archives all the different orders that were made starting in 1914. So for the silk velvet that's in the West Gallery, we knew it was White Alum who supplied it mm -hmm. to the Frick collection. So we know there was a first order of a Strier velvet that was the exact same green, and that was most importantly the same quantities that were needed to uh, upholster the West Gallery. So this order book was a good way uh, to, to follow this up. So we keep a trace of who ordered it, what was the quantity ordered, and a piece of the fabric. So it's quite special for us to work on this kind of historical projects. It allows us to delve back into the archives and see how things were made. When you recreate a new textile, you need to match the color and you need to match the technique. The technique, it's quite easy. It doesn't change that much. The color, we proceed through a lot of strike off. So it means that we choose the color on the thread and then we weave a small sample to make sure it match. So for example, for the strie velvet that we wove, we still had the original threads that were used for the production. And despite that, when we wove it on the loom, it didn't look right. Because we have to adapt with modern dyes. And uh, so that's kind of a work of trial and errors. And it's essential to see how the threads act once they're woven together, because they will impact each other, depending on the density of the fabric, depending on the way the threads interlace. So this is very important. And now the weaving looms that we use every day are downstairs, and we have some remnants of the jacquard looms that are upstairs. The jacquard looms actually allows us to see the final result without having to use the mechanical looms and then mount an entire fabric, entire weave, just to see a small piece. So there are a lot of steps that are involved in weaving. It takes a lot of people that care about their work and their know-how to make it. May it be from the making of the threads, of dyeing it, or all the process that we do here at Prel. So sometimes it means adapting looms, like for example using a new velvet loom, it's a way of recreating the exact same techniques, but with new tools. Most of the work that we do is downstairs and with all the team that works for it, all the steps. Here you have the two rolls of fabrics that it created for the West Gallery. So you have one that does the higher background, yeah. one that does the lower background, and one that does the thread in between, like this. And then we have a blade that goes in the middle and that cuts it. So it makes those two rolls, you see. You see as well, the salvage of the fabric is a different color. So at the time of the order, in 1914, it was made to distinguish the mills who were producing. If you look at the book upstairs, there was a yellow line. That's what at the time they used. Here we tried to make the French flag, so there's not that many French mills in France anymore. For the freak, we redid it, so that when you remove it in, uh, I don't know how many years, you can find the origin by looking at the salvage as it was done before. So it tells the story of the mill who made it. So it's quite special for us to work for the Frick a hundred years later. The hands of more than a dozen people will work to dress the walls of the Frick. And we look forward to being able to sing it uh, and have a piece of Lyon in New York. <laughs>